and then we'll do a printf um, bracket or semi uh, quote and then percent where's my percent sign there we go percent D uh, where I have the mic in front of my keyboard it's kind of hard to type accurately and um, you know do stuff um, so with printf you can do percent D uh, comma and then put in a variable and end bracket semicolon so what is this gonna do um, when you what it basically what it does is this is a defined format is what this print uh, this quotation is and percent D basically says okay so I've got a percent D here um, go and find in the uh, after the comma the first uh, variable so this will take go percent D okay cool I'm gonna go grab the first variable which is this whole number and insert it here so if we run that control F5 we will see that it does oh um, should add a new line so this is easier to read um, and control F5 yes uh, 6 so you can see it printed that 6 number uh, we can also put stuff around the percent D so uh, this is the value of uh, copy and paste whole number and so if we hit F5 on that and run or not F5 sorry um, shift F5 to end debugging um, and control F5 here we go so this is the value of a whole number so that percent D is just sort of like it's going through this list and so this list can be longer so you can add as many variables onto the end as long as you have the appropriate symbols so percent D is what you use for a I integer uh, there's different percent symbols uh, it's basically just a percent followed by a letter okay and we're back sorry I had to actually go check and look these up because it's actually been a long time since I've done anything with print um, in terms of these percents um, but percent C is your characters um, and percent, percent F is your floats um, those are the main ones we're gonna worry about if there's more that need to be brought up I'll bring them up um, but I just wanted to cover that quickly I know we're going glossing over a whole bunch of stuff right now um, but hopefully you guys are picking up on it if there's anything you don't understand leave a comment uh, if I get enough comments um, about one thing then I'll make another video further explaining it if it's just uh, if I only one person comments about it I'll probably just comment back to you um, or send a private message depending uh, on how big the response will have to be um, so but I want to try and do mostly if there's a lot of responses and pe like normally if one person has a question there's a lot more people who have a question but they're not talking about it so that's why I kind of want to do video responses based on things because I'll be able to uh, explain it to everyone um, but anyways the whole point of that was I wanted to show um, what happens when you try and make a integer a decimal number so if you do point four, yeah point .4 um, and then run this you'll see that it says I left a comma there so control F5 yes you'll see it says 6 if you make that point 9 and then run this you'll see it says 6 it's not rounding it's truncating basically anything after the decimal it just cuts off because it's an integer it's a whole number it doesn't care and then you have floats floats are actually your uh, your decimal numbers um, so when it comes to these guys you're gonna be able to do anything you want you can do uh, 6.45 and then semicolon um, and then put that in there change this D to an F and then control F5 run it you see it's 6.50000 um, you can also do um, that um, and so what that does is it defines uh, how many decimal places you want after um, 6.5 um, change it to uh, 2 so on and so forth so the zero point and then however many decimal places after the number you want to print and so yeah that's that's your your floats um, doubles 
are basically the same thing as floats except they have more memory so they just have a lot more larger space I'll get into doubles more in uh, a later video so because I'll be able to explain them better uh, Bools are pretty much uh, like a light switch so you 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 basically they're um, like what's the best way to oh, I'm trying to um, choice I guess uh, is a descriptive name somewhat so they can actually be true or they can be false so underlying true and false are sort of defined um, d definitions for two things uh, true or we'll start with false false means zero so really false is the exact same thing as zero true now this is a little tricky for some people to get their head around at first true is essentially the same thing just clean up a bit here true is the same thing as non-zero so what true means is anything that's not zero so it could be seven could be two could be that if it's not zero then it's true that's basically how it works bools just allow you to kind of make it all, your code a little more cleaner because you can sort of visually see true and false and bools can be set to zero or one if you don't want to do true and false they're more of like flags conditions um, we'll get into that in a bit and then you have chars so uh, chars are characters and characters are like this so single quotation single quotation in the middle you have a letter so characters are just like one character just one one symbol one letter what um, can't support two um, so that's just a single character and then this whole like double quotations is that we see here when we're printing stuff that represents a string a a a string is a uh, sequence of characters so anything anything more than one character we call a string if it's just one one symbol one letter that's called a character um, we'll get into how to make strings and how strings are used much much later on probably two or three videos um, so running one second guys okay guys I just checked time we're at 20 minutes now that might be edited down a bit because I might have to cut a bit of this out um, but I, I wonder if anyone's even still watching at this point just just try and follow with me I know it's kind of dull in this first bit there's a lot to explain I'm going over it very quickly but again if you have any questions you know it you know try and be specific with them and then I'll try and cover it in another video if you have many questions but I I'm just sort of glossing over things trying to get as much content out as possible so you guys can start playing with this on your own and then start to you know just play with things just you know if it doesn't work keep going at it um, you know you're gonna get errors so if you forget a semicolon uh, and you run it control F5 you're gonna have stuff like this syntax error float should be preceded by a uh, semicolon so yeah you, you because the float is the next line here it's saying there should be a semicolon before this so it's giving you a little hint down here in your output you can even have this little error list uh, it may not show automatically so what you can go is view toolbars no not toolbars uh, other windows error list and you can click that and then that'll probably like if I uh, if I close this here and I go uh, view other windows error list it'll pop this up and then I can drag it into center box here and it'll come down in this little tabby section here um, so error list can show me uh, exactly like pinpoint where where the errors are errors are you can see this little line will appear it also take me to it um, yeah and so expecting semicolon um, so you can kind of see those errors there um, it, you can get a, a, a lot of weird errors but it, it, it's really just experience once you experience enough errors they, they just come to you automatically and you'll see something and be like oh that means this um, but you guys you know it, it's just basically errors are when the code doesn't recognize something it shoots out an error and says something's wrong um, okay so let's get on to conditional statements so there are these things called if statements so if bracket bracket squirrel squiggly bracket squiggly bracket so what is this saying uh, an if statement is really just like exactly how it sounds if true 
execute code, else don't execute execute code. Um, so what we can do stuff is like stuff like um, we can do stuff like whole number uh, equal equal. Now two equal signs doesn't mean equal; it means equivalent. So what does what does that mean exactly? Is basically when we say stuff like whole number, which is a variable equal equal seven that's making basically making a conditional statement that's asking a question it's saying whole number equivalent to seven question mark and we know whole number is set to six so six really this becomes boils down to six is equivalent to seven is six basically the same thing as seven it's not so that would return it th what this would return would be false and then this if statement's code would not be executed. So anything inside these squiggly brackets, so if we had something like print uh, f uh, entered if statement, uh, semicolon new line quote bracket semicolon, um, this line would not be called. So just as a very simple demonstration of that, let's put a breakpoint here, remove that one. Um, we have this breakpoint here we're at if false because it's false it's obviously not going to get in there and it skips that line of code and if we had more code it would continue on so if we had something like int x equals zero semicolon um, and then we run that again using f5 uh, and then we hit f10 to walk through it um, we would see that it just bypasses this line of code entirely because this is false and then if we have this say true then run it f5 yes um, then we can hit F10 to walk forward. It gets into this, it prints that line, uh, entered if statement, and int is equal to zero, and so on and so forth. So, um, just cleaning up code here a bit. So if we have, um, just really condense this down so it's a lot easier to see. So if we have whole number is equal equal to six, that is a true statement. We know that's true, that whole number is equivalent to six. So if we hit F10, we enter the print if statement. Again, this little arrow here on the side is showing where our line is, where we are in the code base. So we were here, moved down to this line. Right now, nothing's printed. F10 over that, and then it's printed. And F10 is just basically walking you line by line. Um, right. So um, that is equivalent. There is other ways of doing this as well. We can have um, not equal. So if whole number is not equal to uh, second value here, then we can uh, then this would return uh, true. If it is equal, it would return false. So it's the opposite. So if we run through this, we know that whole number is equal to six because it's is. So what we read here is whole number not equal to six. It is equal to six, so it returns false, and we skip that if statement. So this means that if uh, if whole number was anything else, random number, then when we run this, why are you complaining? Oh, constant too big. You can see the message down here. So it doesn't like how big that care that that number was. It was outside of the range th that it could handle. Um, so. Uh, it's not equal to six, so it gets in here.